nice to dress up occasionally. Come on, Liz, we're gonna be late. Mm. Mm. Hey, after the show, huh? Okay. How many years we peace? About a hundred. It'll be a great night. Yeah, well, if there are no buyers tonight, I'm on to a whole new adventure. Clerking at a convenience store, flipping hamburgers, maybe? <laughs> You're lucky, Ty. Wouldn't be an opening without it. It's going to be great. Yeah. There you are. Come on. <laughs> He's a buyer. Peter, I'd like you to meet Julian. I'm appreciating your talent. The detail, the colors, the realistic shadings and lines. It seems to be a total attack on commercialism. Yes. Of course, I just glop it on and that's what happens. <laughs> okay. I know that we never purchased a single piece without your blessing, Dr. Harmon. When did her opinion reach such stature? <laughs> when she advised us on our last piece. The Barton. Oh, and don't forget the Rothschild sculpture. Oh, how could I forget the Rothschild sculpture? Oh. <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm so glad you're enjoying him. For me, it's not even about the process of painting. <laughs> Lord love a duck, anyone can run a wet brush across a canvas. To me, it's about freedom, a way to let go, channel different energies, and just let whatever happens happen. <laughs> well, whatever energies you're channeling, it Seems to be working. Good, good. You should buy one, uh, a big one. Hey, Mr. Food Man, where are you going? Seriously. <laughs> Coming to regular Guggenheim, Lizzie. <laughs> Don't let this praise go to your head. Don't want you to consider changing professions. How does Elizabeth feel about your artiste's work? Well, I'm sure she'd be happy to let you know herself. She's with Shelley over by Julian's uh, Dead Clown, a work of amusement. <laughs> the only political piece in the room? Shelley's always had a thing for dead clowns. Yeah, don't take it personally. <laughs> Eric, your wife's not an art dealer, is she? No. So why are they asking her what to buy? She's a psychologist. Sometimes she knows better what they want than they do. A head shrinker. Sexy. Maybe you want to make an appointment? <laughs> Maybe you should sell some work. I am going to have sex with you. <laughs> do you advise your husband on his inventory, doctor? Which artists to pursue and where to find them? Oh, no, no. My husband has forgotten more about art than I'll ever know. Mm. It's just a hobby for me. <laughs> Excuse me, can I steal her for a minute? Well. <laughs> so, how's it going? Great. There's definitely a buzz in the air. Do you feel it? Yeah, well, I hope the buzz is not just the champagne, <laughs> Liz. The brothers look at any of the big stuff? Sure, they look. And don't worry, Eric. I made lots of suggestions. You don't want to come off as a used car salesman. Do you think they're going to buy anything? Let's do relax, listen up. It's not as if you can make the rent. Yeah. Where are you going? Expected in New York on business. When? Today. Why didn't you tell me last night? 
I can't take you. I've been meaning to have a talk with you, Tony, and uh, I'm just not very good at these things, but we've been going back. It's almost ready. Are you listening to me, Tony? Can you stop for a minute? I don't think our situation's working. What are you talking about? You're the only one who knows what I can do. I'm not sure I do know. And look, you have got to stop depending on me. Oh, I see. You think you can just fuck me and leave? Come on, Tony, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying that I feel this is the best way. And I'm sorry about that. Tony! Touch me! <laughs> I don't understand the point of it. Well, the point is that shame does not arise when we believe we've done something wrong. That feeling is guilt. But I don't like looking foolish, Doctor. I know this isn't easy, but you must face your fear if you're ever going to get better. I guess I try to block that out. It's just too much for me to handle. Have you told your wife? No. Why would I do that? The question is, why would you? I say, I don't get that. I, I spent the first 30 years of my life chasing after women. And then one day, just because I say I do, it's supposed to somehow end. It's unnatural. What are you feeling? Guilt? Yeah, I do. But it's against my better judgment. Let's approach this from a different angle. You made a commitment, right? You said, I do. I gotta take responsibility. This is ridiculous, Julian. How could you do this to me? As I recall, I didn't sign any papers. Yes, but we had an agreement. I set up the show. Several sales are still pending. I proved to you that I can get you buyers. And you'll get your share. But I'm taking the rest of my work to Sheckley. Don't take any offense, Eric. He's got more contacts and more outlets. He has a stable of artists. You're gonna get lost over there. Well, to be painfully honest, his percentage is considerably less than yours. Bottom line, it's all about the Benjamins, baby. I'm sorry, Eric. You'll get your rent, I promise. You just have to give me one more extension. No, no, I, yeah, I, I understand your position, but you have to be sympathetic to mine as well. Close your eyes. Give me your hand. Okay. What's this? Open it up. So? So? Welcome to the new hottest thing going in town, Eric Mandel Art Gallery. I can't afford this. I don't know anything about running an art gallery. 
You have an incredible eye for talent and for art. You'll do great. I can't believe it. Believe it, it's all yours. This place has a lot of potential. So do you. Can't wait to see you do wonderful things here. Love you. I love you too. Yeah, I think I can do this. I mean, I'm very embarrassed, but... Yes. Thank you. Fuck. Sweetheart, there's a gallery bill. Good timing, Liz. Look, I need to hear about that right now. What's wrong, Eric? Talk to me. Julian left me for Mr. Artshack. He said I can't provide him enough exposure with my one outlet. They're not art galleries anymore, they're called outlets. Well, if you need any. No, I don't need any, thank you. I was just trying to help. Look, I have to do this on my own. If I'm a failure, I have to fail on my own. Why won't you let me be supportive? Because waving your checkbook in my face isn't being supportive. That's not fair. Well, fuck fair, Liz. cleaning deal. Stop it! Stop it! Thanks for all your help. But no one wants to see my shit. Nobody's interested. Liz, I'm sorry I lost it. It's been a horrible couple of days. I'm really trying. I know you are. Thank you. Lizzie, what's going on with you and Eric? I can't seem to talk to him. I pry open my patient's mind even after decades of being sealed. I can make them talk about things they couldn't even dream about. I can't seem to reach him. Well, remember, he's not your patient. He's your husband. I'm trying to do the right thing, but I feel so helpless. I don't want him to lose the gallery. We've been friends forever. 
and I've seen you and Eric through a lot. So I say this with love. Do you think you should keep bailing him out? I sometimes can't help it. I love him so much. Okay. Then now I'll speak as a therapist. I think you're smothering him. I think you're treating him like a boy and you're teaching him to be dependent. He's not sure he can make it on his own. And you need to be sure too. You think you can let go? I don't know. Lizzie, are you in love with who he is or who you think he can be? It's a suicide attempt. Her wrist. I can't get her to say a word. Thank you. Hi, Tony. I'm Dr. Harmon. I'm a psychologist. How are you feeling? Would you like to tell me what's troubling you? Maybe you shouldn't. Are you unable to speak? Let me explain the kind of therapy I do, okay? First of all, you're safe. I won't impose, I won't intrude, I won't violate your space. Do you understand? I won't go anywhere you don't want to go. But what you did last night seemed pretty desperate. I'd rather not see you succeed. Do you want me to stay? Well, if you do, you're going to have to participate. I can't do this alone. I can't pay you. I don't have any money. Oh, don't worry about that. All you have to be is honest with me. My work at the hospital is pro bono. You try to end your life. Can you help me understand why? You're an artist. <laughs> you don't know what I am. Okay. What are you? To know that, you have to see my work. I'd love to. Maybe you can bring some to my office. No! You have to see all of it. You have to come to my studio. Well, I don't think that's possible. So you just talk. You don't mean what you say. Sorry. I'm just happy to see you're still with us. May I come in? You want some coffee? Okay. Your love is definitely for art. Love? It's not love. It's who I am. Who are you? It's in there. I'm in there. I'm that. You have a very interesting style. What's that mark in the bottom right corner? That represents my blood. You see, each piece, it's a part of me. Why do you want to kill yourself? Chance.
chance? The absurdity of my fate being controlled by the people who see my art. Talent means nothing if no one sees it. And maybe the only way that I'll be seen is if I die. You're willing to die on the chance you'll be recognized or discovered? Yeah. There is a difference between want and must have. Wanting is a preference. You get to choose. Must have is a disease, an obsession, no choice. Must have means that if you don't get what you want, your life seems worthless and you feel dead inside. An obsession happens when you can't look inside yourself. Then you convince yourself there's something you absolutely must have. The whole purpose is to avoid the truth. So what's the answer? You have to start by accepting what is. I don't know. It sounds so hard. I don't know what life would be like without must-haves. We'll work on it. Don't do it. Don't shoot the messenger. Oh. It's never-ending, isn't it? Every time I think I've got something good, I lose it. That guy was the biggest prima donna I have ever seen. Now, there's lots of great talent out there. It's gonna happen. Yeah. I'm only afraid it might not happen soon enough, Rita. I'm really burying myself here. I, I'd really hate to do it, but I'm afraid I might have to let you go. Hell, I might have to let this all go. I've been with you from the beginning of this thing, so I want to see it turn around just as much as you do. Now, if you can't afford me right now, that's fine. You'll pay me when you break out of this little slump. Now, have we got that all cleared up? Yeah, we've got it clear. Thanks, Rita. Even if you were a success, you'd find another must-have. It's so important for you to understand this. I believe that to be true in my mind, but my feelings tell me something different. Feelings do that, don't they? You have to trust me. Don't try and change me. I mean, is it so awful that I want the world to know who I am? That there's more than just paint? What if they don't? Can you live without that? What for? That'll be our next session. Unfortunately, our time is up. Listen, I may have something that might interest you. I know of this gallery. They're always looking for new artists. Why don't you give them a call? I don't know. You're talented, young. Give yourself a chance. Fool not to come after looking at your portfolio. Photographs rarely do paintings justice. Well, there's some great work here. You really have an amazing talent, you know that? Thank you. You know, I would like to take a couple of these. I know quite a few people that I think would be very interested in your work. I have another piece I'd like for you to see. Wow. How about a little champagne? What's the occasion? No occasion, I just thought you might enjoy one. Sweetheart, about the rent. No, don't you concern yourself about the rent. Like you said, all it takes is one good day. Did 
you sell something? Not a thing. Cheers. Cheers. We are celebrating something, aren't we? Well, I think I found somebody. A really extraordinary talent. What's his name? Tony. Oh, except that he's a she. Well, that's a girl, really. A little strange, but she has a vision. You know, I've never felt this way about an artist before. I have a real strong feeling about her. She's really special. Drink up. Thank you. What's this? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Feeling better, I see. I owe you everything. Why? What's going on? I can't believe this is happening. What? I went to the gallery like you told me, and I met with the owner, showed him my book. He wanted to see more, so I invited him to my studio. He came. I can't believe it, but he loved them all. That's wonderful. And the best news is, he's gonna put on a show. Great. I'm very proud of you. And there's more. More? You're not gonna believe this. What? I don't know how it happened. He was looking at my paintings, and he accidentally brushed against me. I thought it was an accident. I don't know, but my knees buckled when he started caressing me. And our eyes locked. And I felt myself getting lost in his eyes. Tony, what are you saying? We made love. It was just all in the moment. It was so beautiful. I can't believe this is all happening so fast. I don't have the words to describe how I'm feeling right now. And I owe it all to you, Dr. Harmon. Would you excuse me for a moment? Are you okay? Sorry. You okay? Oh, yes, thank you. I'm fine. So, where were we? My amazing experience. Right. Um, so, how do you feel about what happened? Well, there was just something there from the second we saw each other. A spark. Electricity. If he didn't brush up against me, I'm sure I would have seduced him. <laughs> Isn't it incredible? I'm having a show. Me, a show. It's next week. You're going to be there, right? When is it? Friday. Can you come? Well, I'm going to have to check my You calendar. have to. You're responsible for all of this, you know. I'll try my best. Every time she opened her mouth, it was like a spike going through my heart. Christ, can't be true. Can it? Lizzie, with everything you know about her, how could you believe her? I'm not sure. I know you're distraught, and it's hard not to be scared, but consider the source. This is a patient, a fairly disturbed young woman who's suicidal, erratic, willful, and spoiled. What do you believe? There's a part of me that knows it can't be true. Look, let's be logical. Where was this supposed to have happened? Where? Uh, in her studio. What difference does it make? Oh, wait, 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 wait. At what time of day? I don't know. All right. Are you sure where Eric was when this supposedly took place? I'm not sure. Um, work, I guess. <laughs> All you know is what she's told you, right? What about Eric's side of it? 
You need more information. Look, this girl could be delusional. She could be trying to build herself up to you. She could be having some kind of a knight in shining armor fantasy. I mean, he did take all her work, didn't he? That's true. You need to sit down and talk to Eric. That good? That popular. I think most of the pieces are gonna sell before the opening. Must be pricey. It's a bargain, believe me. How much for this piece? 8,700. I know, I know, it sounds crazy, right? But next month, it's gonna be worth double that. Which means this month, it's a bargain. Hey, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. All right. Good. If you came to see Eric, he's gone for the day. Do you know where he went? He's with Tony, our artist, getting her ready for the opening. And you know, it's her first show and all. Could you excuse me? I'm gonna go get the customers. Don't mind me, I'll just use the phone. Help yourself. have your attention please first of all i would like to thank you all for attending it's a real pleasure to have you all here on this special evening to join in the celebration in the vision of an artist a vision and talent that is very rare in the world today so while you may have already had the pleasure please help me in welcoming tony Now, there are still some paintings available, but they're not going to be around long. So please enjoy the artwork and the champagne. And thanks again for coming. Thank you. you expecting someone? I was just expecting a friend. Hmm. I'd like you to meet somebody. Come on. Mm -hmm. I think he has something here. We better buy something fast. Mm. I've got my eye on that monstrosity in the corner. It's deliciously hideous. Mm -hmm. I do hope he manages to keep her longer than 10 seconds this time. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, I'd like you to meet Tony, the star of the evening. And a beautiful star at that. It's a pleasure. Thank you. I was just commenting earlier about the promise that your work shows, Tony. Thank you. Very haunting images. I was quite surprised when I saw you for the first time that who you are and the images on the walls don't quite fit together. Would it have been more appropriate if I had worn a straight jacket tonight? <laughs> Hang on to her, Eric. She's your best yet. Well, if you'll excuse us, her public awaits us. You enjoying yourself, Shelly? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Yes. Shelly! Oh, wow. Darling, hi. Hi. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> Tony, I've been waiting for the pleasure all evening, and I must say what a thrill it is meeting someone as talented as you. It's a perfect night. Just fabulous. And it is. 
Tony, this is Robert Kenderson, and if you be nice to him, he'll say nice things about you in his column. Hey, Shelly, excuse me one minute. Mr. Congratulations, Thank right? Thank you. Hey, having a good time? Oh, well, I think it's interesting. Peter's enthralled, and where's Liz? Well, gee, I don't know. She should be here by now. Hey, let me introduce you to Tony. No, they seem to be busy. Let's not interrupt. You're here to see my work? I am, and I have to tell you, Tony, I'm not of Nissan time, talent, but I am on reaction. The buzz about you is right. I haven't seen a crowd, especially a bunch as jaded as this, react this favorably in a long time. Thank you. You seem to be making Eric very happy. somewhat astonished to discover Picasso in the little blue dress at the Mandel Gallery. <laughs> hey, aren't you happy for me? <laughs> of course I am. Tell me all about it. Well, it was a fantastic night. I mean, what a successful event. Tony was magnificent. Hey, what happened? Where were you? I had an emergency. I was called to the hospital. Well, it would have been nice if you could have been there. I'm sorry. I'm happy it turned out so well. Thanks. I feel the most frustration when there's a lack of perfect control. I want the image on the canvas to be one thing, and all of a sudden there's something completely different there. Is this what you want to talk about today? Painting problems? Am I wasting your time? I wouldn't say that. Okay, then what would you like to talk about? Do you remember how we discussed learning to love yourself? You've made progress, but I think there's a distance to go. What about the affair you told me about? Well, that's no problem. You mean it's over? Actually, it's going better than ever. He bought me a car, a Porsche. Really? And I've made an interesting discovery. What's that? Painting and making love are almost the same things. And it seems I'm quite a talent in both arenas. <laughs> it's funny. I've never been able to speak so openly. Yes? Well, I'm an only child, and as far as I can remember, all my friends were boyfriends, really. I've never known anybody like Eric. He's creative and romantic. I think he really understands me and cares for me. Can I tell you something? We were in my bathtub, and he told me to stand on the sides while he did wonderful things to me from underneath. Hi, it's me. Can you meet me? Sure, where? The gym. You OK? No, I just need to kick the shit out of something. See you in 20 minutes. Great, thanks. When I saw them together at the art gallery, I was so angry and upset for you. But look, I'm not going to suggest that sending a patient to Eric's gallery was the right thing to do, because it wasn't. We both know that. We're both so caught up in it now. I'm no good to you, and you need supervision. No! Look, you know Dr. Thompson. She's an excellent therapist with an impeccable reputation. She's been there, she's seen it all, and she can be objective. Call her. No. Don't you think you need help? No. Is this worth jeopardizing your career over? Forget about it. I can't. I thought you might say that. Here. Call this man. He's not very polished, but I hear he's good at his job. He has an office down the hall from me.
try something new. What? <laughs> the bathtub? I don't think my back could handle that, honey. Do it. And I'm glad you do. This affair may be doing you harm. What do you know about him? It doesn't matter. What we have is beautiful. I've never known anything like it before. When we make love, we're so in tune with each other. His breath becomes mine and our hearts are intertwined in a world where nothing else matters except being together. He's so powerful, but I feel safe. We know we can trust each other. I know I can trust him and let him do as he pleases. I know he loves that. <laughs> Tony, this is dangerous. Your Prince Charming fantasies won't work. In my opinion, you have to end this immediately. For your own safety. Fantasies? It may seem that way to you, but they're not. He is madly in love with me. Please, I know what I'm talking about. What are you doing? Why are you trying to talk me out of this? You said you wouldn't try to change me. 
I'm not trying to change you. I'm trying to protect you. Eric, your show last week was quite spectacular. And that girl is just delightful. What an eye she has. She seemed comfortable around you, Eric. You poor boy. I tell you, it was the best night we've ever had at the gallery. Tony wound up doing three different magazine articles. I think we're going to wind up getting a lot of great press on her. And the best thing of all is, she's under contract. Oh, that's great. What's her story you never had a chance to tell me? Well, actually, she just walked into my office one day. When I first looked at her stuff, I was knocked out. I really think she's got the touch. Yeah, the Midas touch. Well, she can't paint fast enough for me. Well, it certainly was the best show I've ever seen you do. It really had an air of, of real excitement about it. Too bad Liz wasn't there to see it. That was unfortunate. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Excuse me one second. It really was terrific, Liz. Hello? Very exciting. Oh, hi. Um, can you hold on a second? I'll be just a minute. Excuse me. Peter. What? <sighs> and I can give you everything you need. You know that. Well, I need everything you have. All right, when? Tomorrow, we'll have lunch at the usual. I can't talk now. I've got dinner guests. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Congratulations, Eric. Nice Good talk. Good night, darling. certainly will. Thanks, Liz. Thanks. I'll see you, out. Listen, I thought I'd stop at the newsstand, see if any more reviews came out. Be right back. Ninety-nine times out of a thousand, when a woman walks through that door and tells me her husband is having an affair, the man's having an affair. But that ain't so in your case. What? What part of that didn't you understand? How did you arrive at this conclusion, Mr. Albert? What's the evidence? That's just it. There is no evidence. How can you say that? Take a look. I did the SOS for two weeks. SOS? Surveillance of suspects. I followed them constantly, went everywhere they did, day and night. Believe me, there's nothing going on of a sexual nature. What about the matchbook I found? Oh, the Emanuel Hotel? Well, they left after lunch. They appeared pretty close. But they never checked in. And I checked back all the way to when you said they first met. Now, they like each other, no question. But, uh, no hanky-panky going on here. I'm sure of it. What about this? She made him a fortune in a very quick amount of time. I figure about 200 grand. So as soon as he hooks up with the girl, his rent gets paid, his credit card's clear, it's legit. No monkey business, as you suspected. I had a friend down at the department run a check on Tony. No red flags, everything checked out fine. So you can stop worrying. I'm very impressed, Mr. Albert. Tony, what's your love life been like in the past? You mean before Eric? 
Yes. Not great. I've had slow periods just like everyone else. Compared to Eric, nobody comes close. What do you do during those slow periods? Are you asking me if I masturbate? Not exactly. What do you tell yourself during those times? Well, sometimes it's really hard to keep a positive attitude, but it's got to get better, I guess. Do you imagine what better is? What do you mean? Have you got a picture of the ideal man? Have you invented a perfect man? I have ideas, sure, but it was never perfect. Not before I met Eric. I think he's ready to take it to the next level. What do you mean? He told me he wants to leave his wife to be with me. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's like a fairy tale. Shelley, I've made a decision. What's that? I've decided she fabricated the whole thing. On what grounds? I told you what Jack dug up on them. Nothing. He likes her because she pulls him out of a slump, and in her case, she lost herself in Eric because he showers her with attention. She took it and made up a complete fantasy. You sure? Of course I'm not sure. <sighs> All right, look, even if there is nothing going on between them, what are you going to do with her? <sighs> There's something else? She said he's leaving me. You believe her? We haven't been doing that well lately. Lizzie, you've got to confront this. You're right. I've got to get her to admit that it's all a fairy tale. No, not her. You've got to confront Eric. He's your husband. If you don't, you're going to kill your marriage. So you haven't told me about all this business you've been doing. I know. I hardly see you anymore. But things are picking up, and there's a real coup coming. What's that? Peter has a line on a space in San Francisco. He wants to back me kind of like a silent partner on the opening of another gallery. Eric, are we in trouble? What are you talking about? Our marriage. Where is this coming from? I get the feeling our marriage is in trouble. <sighs> well, this is curious. I mean, when I couldn't pay the rent on the gallery, you were happy. And now all of a sudden, I'm in the black, and you've got a problem? That's not fair. Isn't it? No, it isn't. Things weren't that great when you could pay the rent. I can't believe you're accusing me of that. I want you to do well. I always have. Yes, you always have, but now that I'm doing it on my own... You're not doing it on your own. And what does that mean? It means we're a team. We do things together. I think the success is driving you away from me. Well, the only place I'm driving to is San Francisco. Nowhere else. Are you having an affair? What? With who? Tony. This is absurd. She's a child, for Christ's sake. What's got into you? I don't know. I'm just so confused. I think I need to hear from you. And I need a little reassurance. Hey, I, I know things are a little scattered right now. And there's a lot of pressure on me, but I never meant for it to tear us apart. I'm sorry I doubted you. Look, I have to leave tomorrow. I have to meet with the bank and the realtor, but I'll be back on the 9th. I'm just a little overstressed and overworked. Hey, we both are. Don't give up on us. I won't. Tony's not in yet. 
I just hung up with her, Dr. Harmon. She said she won't be coming in. Did she say why? She was very brief. I tried to get her on the line with you, but she hung up when I put her on hold. Thank you. Operator, I've been getting a busy signal for a number I've been trying to reach. Can you tell me if it's off the hook or it's actually in use? One moment, I'll check that for you. Tony? Tony? If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. If you need help, hang up and then dial your operator. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. If you need help... Albert Investigations, this is Jack. Jack, this is Liz Harmon. What's up? I want you to do something for me. My husband supposedly is in San Francisco and Tony's missing. So you don't trust what I found? Please don't take it personally. I'm at the gallery. Tony's paintings are gone. They're not here and they're not in her studio. I'll see what I can dig up. Thanks. stay in his place in San Francisco, so you can always reach me there. I'll be in and out, but you can leave a message on the machine. Listen, Liz, I really meant what I said. I want to work this out. I love you. See you on the 9th. End of messages. Hello? It's me, Jack. I got something for you. What is it? Well, I want you to see this for yourself, uh, but uh, you have to meet me. Where? What's going on? Don't worry, just meet me at the downtown police precinct. Anything that you can do, anything at all. I can't. Thanks for coming down. Not have my There's been a snag because the information is privileged. Look, if you're going to tell me that she's insane or criminal, just follow me. Maybe I will go do that. Yes, please go now. That's my contact right there on the phone. Alice, this is uh, Dr. Harmon, the woman I told you about. So what have we got? So what can you do? What are you nuts? That's no good. I need more details. What the hell was the offense? A letter of request. We don't have time for a goddamn letter of request. We don't have time for a letter of request. What can you do for us? Picture. Yeah. Okay. 
Send it, thanks. Hi. What's going on? That's the best we can do, Jack. Well, it's better than nothing. I'll check the facts. I owe you one. Don't think I won't collect. What's a friend of Alice's? He's with Interpol. We asked him to do a check. This man was involved in the murder trial in England. I told you nothing came up when we did a check on Tony. So I decided to start digging into your husband's past. I take it you didn't know about this. About what? He doesn't say what he did. It was a crime of violence. It'll be a couple of days before we get the details. Dr. Harmon, Tony's on line one. Where are you? I'm outside your building at the park. I, I need to talk to you right now. Coming up. No, I feel like I'm gonna be sick. Please come right away. Okay. Where have you been? I was looking for you. I even stopped by the studio. They'll put you in a hospital, you know, if you continue like this. I didn't know what to do. I just needed some time to think. About what? What are you so upset about? Eric went to San Francisco, and I feel like I'm going crazy without him. You called me out here to tell me you miss your lover? Why are you so mad at me? You're supposed to be on my side. And who said I'm not on your side? What is it, Tony? I'm pregnant. I've got to go. We'll discuss this tomorrow. Wait! You can't leave me like this! Tony, I have another appointment. We'll discuss this tomorrow. Harlan, you're late for an appointment. Tony? Tony, are you there? Does it have to do with Eric? <laughs> Tony, tell me, what does it mean? That's the day. What day? That's the day he's gonna kill his wife. What? What did you say? He told me he was gonna kill his wife to be with me. I do. I can't help you. 
You're talking about a crime. You have to go to the police. I can't! You don't have a choice. I'm afraid. If you don't go, I will. Maybe he's just talking. Maybe he won't do it. You're not thinking straight, Tony. I don't want to lose him. I'm overreacting. He, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. Oh, just forget it. Just go. Go on. Get out of here. Just leave me alone. Go. Get out. <laughs> This is really crazy. I just can't believe I don't know my own husband. Did you try reaching him in San Fran? I tried. I got the answering machine. Now try not to worry. You'll be safe. I'll see to that. Call up a couple of my buddies on the force and have them do a few look-sees on you. And I think you'd better steer clear of Tony and your husband until we get a few more answers. <sighs> Thanks, Jack. Anyway, you have three more days before he's expected back. Today is only the sixth. In the meanwhile, I'll track her down. I'll keep an eye on her. And I'll keep you informed. It's gonna be all right. Hello? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to yell at you like that. I don't know what to do. Please come back. No, Tony, not tonight. Please, you've gotta come back. No, good night. He can't do it. like a fairy tale. Do you believe it? Today is only the 
6. You're cracking up, lady. Eric? Eric? Hello? Eric? Eric, is it you? Jack, what are you trying to do? Scare me? Too? No. Tony, why are you doing this? Must have. It's all about what I must have, isn't it, Doctor? I must have Eric. Tony, listen. Put down the knife. Must have. Those are your words, remember? Must have obsession. That's what you said. Please don't. <laughs> I knew he was your husband. That first day while I was waiting, Rita hands me a magazine. Opened it up and there it was. Gallery owner Eric Mandel and his wife, Dr. Liz Harmon. Always with an eye for talent. Blah, blah, blah. Look at me when I'm talking to you. I trusted you. I believed you and you lied. You passed me off. Just gave me away. That's not true. I wanted this for you. Shut up! Just shut up! You wanted this for Eric, not for me. Eric told me about the trouble he was in before I came along. You used me. You said one thing, but you meant something else. So... I decided to take him away. It was easy. I was just trying to help. <laughs> you helped. You helped all right. You helped yourself. So now I'm gonna help myself. I must have Eric. And now I will have him. Liz! Liz! He's coming. Liz! I'll get her. Liz, you bitch, where are you?
got the bodies in anyway. As soon as they finish up with you two, I'm going to need to see you in my office. You know, my wife's had a long night, Detective. Can't this wait until morning? I'm afraid not. This is a homicide. Well, do you think I murdered her with self-defense? That's what I need to determine. I came home to help my wife. He saved my life. There are two dead bodies in that house. Look, look I, I think you better listen to this. You don't need to worry about your wife. She's as good as dead. No more obstacles for us. I'll get rid of her myself. So when you get back, it'll be just us. I love you, Eric. Do you love me? <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> she really thought she was talking to you? Seems like she did. I'd been out when I got back. That was on the tape. Why didn't you call the police? I did. I, I even played the tape for them, but they said, unless she did something illegal, there's nothing they can do. Why didn't you call me? I called Johnny. The answering machine never picked up, and he didn't return any of my pages. Excuse me. Dr. Harmon, I'm so sorry about Jack. He was a good man. You need to know the rest of the info he requested came in. Your husband was involved in a attempted murder proceeding in England, but as a witness. After a bar brawl, a woman was raped and almost killed. Eric then testified as a witness. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a lot to tell you. Later. Oh, later. Much later.